Hello again. Today is a special day. I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time. Finally, here it is. Uh, my DIY speaker is a Gapster GS11. these for a long time over six months time initially I've done speakers before a few times I've built a couple speakers here and there but I always wanted to make those really awesome speakers and uh, the idea started with a little sketch because I want to be like a special design inspired by a little vintage flair yet modern so I did a little sketch on a piece of paper. I said, okay, I'm going to build those guys. So I started looking for some, one of the best uh, drivers. Uh, so I sourced uh, their ScanSpeak uh, uh, woofers, uh, mid-range, uh, supposed to be a ScanSpeak mid-range, but I ended up uh, finding a BMW on uh, eBay. And these are a RAL uh, Dipole 140D uh, uh, tweeters. Uh, they're pretty amazing tweeters. I uh, love those guys. Uh, but we all know it's not about just the driver. You can get the best drivers in the world, but if you don't have the right design, the right cabinetry, and the crossover and all that, you're not going to get great speakers. So the idea was to design speakers that look as... I want them to be big, but I want them to look small. Uh, the reason I want to make them look small is to finally I want them to get accepted in the house so we don't have too many objections on them. Uh, it's easy to build monster speakers but it's going to be hard to justify putting them in a nice living room. Uh, so the idea was okay I'll make them really deep this way uh, because the depth is not in your face and they will look relatively small. Uh, but uh, so I came up with this design. So these are pretty much two feet deep by 23, almost two feet. If you'd like to know how I built the speakers, I'm going to put the link in the description below uh, because the video is going to end up being too long if I group them all together. So uh, the building part is going to be in a separate video linked below uh, where I go through all the process, how they were built from the very beginning till the very end it's pretty detailed as well also please if you like this channel uh, please subscribe and uh, some thumbs up will be always uh, appreciated it helps the channel uh, to keep on going the speakers are very modular uh, in the sense that uh, things can be changed for example the whole uh, mid-range unit could come off it's only bolted by four bolts and uh, so is the tweeter as well. Uh, so I, the idea was in the future I would like to maybe put something different without having to go through a lot of uh, work. Uh, also on top of that, the, uh, the whole, uh, for example, the midrange is decoupled from the, uh, from the base by there's a sorbacin layer between. Uh, so is the, uh, the tweeter. Uh, this particular spe speaker come in two designs in one. One is what you see here and the other one is where the uh, RAL uh, tweeters they go in the back. So this is the time aligned version where the tweeter is actually in the same plane as the other drivers. I've done lots of uh, sweeps and uh, measurements to get the uh, right distance and listen a lot so this ended up being the optimal place but uh, 
those speakers can be converted very easily, so I'll just take the tweeter comes right off. They are very telescopic. These are about 10 pounds each. Here. Very heavy. I'll put this here. This one has a little It comes off, the whole bracket comes off. And here we go. You go right in here and plug those back in. There we go. So this is uh, what I call the high frequency dispersed version. Uh, this all started as a fluke. Uh, I, the way the speakers were designed was, was fine, but then uh, my wife looked at them and said, oh my god, these look so big. I was thinking, oh geez, uh, how about maybe I was thinking maybe if I put the tweeter on the back, temporary while they're kind of stored, because they do look cool like that, and then when I want to listen to them, I'll just uh, have a system where I can Put it at the front, and uh, but then I did. So I said, "Oh, I just listen to it." And I did listen to it. So I was like blown away by this quality of the sound. It was so the the high frequencies that weren't like right in your face, or they just uh, go all around you, and it's, it feels so at ease and relaxed. Yet you still hear all the high frequencies uh, very well, and the imaging was still pretty good. Uh, so I said, wow, how could that be? They're like almost two feet away from where they should be. Uh, but uh, you don't really hear the time alignment difference. I mean, maybe you could if you try to be as critical as possible, but uh, preferably I ended up liking this uh, version better for listening. Uh, sometimes I do put it at the front if I want to like, you know, be try to be as politically correct and uh, avoid any of the critics, but personally well, I prefer them uh, more like this. Uh, probably the, what I'm thinking could be the reason is these are dipole tweeters, they're not your average tweeters, so they're very large, they're dipole, so there's front and uh, the back is equally, is as equal to the front, so there's a, it, it does radiate on both sides. So my idea was, uh, what I was thinking could be is that uh, by having the sound come here, it's it dispersed over this uh, conical shape, mid-range, uh, so it kind of comes in a more, less, you know, direct way. And also there's waves coming from the back and uh, end up being a really good sound. You never know in audio, sometimes if you stray away from the, you know, the classic thing, you will be surprised what what you can get. Uh, initially, these were designed to be. Uh, I always dreamed about doing an active crossover, where I'll have like two amps for the mid range and a tweeter and a, and. A, a class A solid state amp for the uh, woofer. Uh, so I did try it, but uh, I was, I mean, it was good, but I was not really impressed with the sound. Uh, I think par partially because the active uh, crossover system I was using, uh, I don't want to name any products here, but I, I wasn't happy. It was a hissing sound, which was like, oh my God, these are really cheap up amps in there. Uh, probably could have, you know, bought some really very high end active uh, uh, crossover uh, system, but, you know, I went back the passive way and I'm glad I did. It's just the sound is night and day difference. But that's in my experience, that could be different with different speakers and most importantly with different active uh, systems because there's some beautiful active across the world. But I think if you have, you need to have a very high-end circuitry, you can't have cheap high-end circuitry for, for active uh, uh, crossovers. And I noticed that the more you dial in to correct room things, the worse the sound got. The best sound was 
to keep it as simple as possible. But what's great about the active crossover is it helped me determine where things should be. Where should I cut off the frequency between the woofer and the mid-range, the mid-range and the tweeter. And that helped me understand all the... And when I designed my ta passive speakers, my passive crossovers, I had at least a starting point where things should be. And that helped a lot uh, speed up the crossover. When I say speed up, that was a relative term because it took me over at least two months trying to design those crossovers to, uh, to come up with the right formula. Uh, so yeah, so this is the uh, dispersed uh, version, as I said, uh, again, but it's so easy to change. It literally takes one minute per speaker to, to switch from one to the other. So how do they sound? If you want to just a, a quick, a quick uh, thing here, uh, pretty much I was blown away. I thought by, you know, uh, it's, they're going to sound good, but I, I was blown away how amazing they are. I've never heard any speakers like them. Uh, and I've listened to quite a few high-end uh, speakers in my life. Uh, I'm not just saying that. Uh, the bass is amazing. I think having the deep cabinetry uh, and uh, I don't know if I told you guys the uh, the speaker there is about eight layers of then the woofer there's eight layers of plywood one quarter inch of rubber a layer of uh, fiberglass resin that gets also in impregnated into the wood makes a very hard rigid structure a sorbacin like layer and on top a very shredded rubber that is soft and slow bouncing all in all there's about one and a half inch thick plus also one inch of foam not counting multiple two inch bracing and you can see the details in the separate video with the detailed construction in the link below. An extremely rigid damped structure with no resonance. This is a section when I cut actually the port which by the way these are down firing there's a down firing port in the bottom. Uh, cut the circle uh, from the bottom so this is actually from the speaker. So this is these weigh 200 pounds each these are extremely heavy. Uh, as I was building them, I could feel the weight getting heavier and heavier. At the beginning, I could lift them by myself. Towards the end, I need to have somebody helping me to move them around. And that's, uh, yeah, it was, it was there. So they're very, very well uh, braced and damped and, and, and everything. There's still a few things missing. Uh, I've got some black screws to go on the front woofer. I haven't completely assembled the second crossover yet, but I wanted to get this video going. Also, uh, the mid-range section, uh, you could see in the video where I talk about the construction, there is a, inside a, a muffler system. It's a cone, a perforated cone, where the sound can go into the cone, go into the, all the different perforations, and they get trapped into the insulation portion. It's a muffler system that I, uh, I thought about. Um, the uh, RAL uh, tweeters are very unique because they are actually dipole tweeters, so it almost has that sense of an open baffle speaker, at least on the, uh, when it comes to the high frequencies. The crossovers are equally impressive. Uh, using a combination of uh, MCAP uh, high quality uh, capacitors, MyFlex capacitors, great uh, resistors, and uh, all air core inductors, a um, lot of them are foil. Even the woofer has a huge, large uh, air core inductor because I didn't want to lose any of the, into the resistance to keep as, uh, the base as uh, high as possible. There is a couple of selectors you can see here on the uh, crossover and these help uh, because uh, the speaker can be changed from one configuration to the other there needed to be some changes into the crossover so it's just um, it's a matter of changing the position of the tweeter and switching a couple of the dials and boom you're into uh, like having another crossover for the new design. 
Uh, it took a long time to get to the final product. Uh, I did a couple of videos on how to avoid uh, crossover uh, interference. I'll put a link for them below. It's pretty amazing stuff. You should, uh, if you have time, watch those. Uh, nevertheless, so this all took a long time to make and finally got the right formula. I started with cheap components, then better components, and did a lot of sweeps, some of them that drove everybody nuts in the house, and finally got some decent uh, uh, frequency response. It's pretty much, uh, it's pretty good, uh, pretty much flat all the way to the end, just a little bit below 150, but that's normal for being inside. I uh, took the speakers also outside, uh, on a dolly, uh, about 200 pounds, extremely awkward. There was no way I could put them high off the ground. Uh, so the best I could do is I put them a little flatter and uh, I took some measurements that way. So the frequency response is pretty amazing. Uh, almost 20 to 20 flat. Uh, and that's, uh, it goes, uh, the woofer goes so low. Uh, and that's a good testament for a good construction. Uh, of the cabinetry. The uh, waterfall is also pretty good. This is a DIY project. It's built for myself. Uh, the design is for, to my taste. I can understand if someone doesn't like the look of them or something and that's fine or the way I build things it's fine. Uh, the whole idea about DIY is that you build your own, build them the way you like them to your own design. Initially I was going to have a uh, one big video about uh, the speakers and how I made them but I just realized it's just gonna be uh, over 45 minutes so uh, and I'm trying to keep those videos as small as possible so I'm gonna have a, a second uh, part of the video it's gonna I'm gonna put a link below uh, on how I made the speakers how they were built so if you wanna want to know details about how I built some uh, check out the link in the video below and you'll see uh, all the hard work that took uh, almost six months uh, to build. I will uh, also uh, put some links to other videos that are also related like building the crossovers, ideas like the speaker wires and stuff like that that, that went into the speakers. So I hope you enjoy this uh, video. Please uh, subscribe and uh, give me some likes and uh, you can ring the bell and all that drill. Uh, and I hope to see you in another video soon. Take care.